Hi everyone, this is Sean Frangella for PremiumBeat.com and today we're going to go over how to create real 3D CG rain in Cinema 4D with actual custom particles and no plugins or anything like that and create some really cool particle emission stuff all right inside Cinema 4D. So what we have here is a quick little render and what's cool about this is we're rendering all these particles with gravity in Cinema 4D and if I look in Cinema 4D at my example file, these aren't just little dots or anything like that, they're actual three-dimensional particles. So if you wanted it to be something else besides rain or if you wanted to, like we have in our little test animation, really slow down time and create slow motion rain and really close to maybe say like one little droplet, it'll really work and you can have reflections and do all sorts of cool stuff and really have a whole 3D environment of rain that could bounce off stuff and really work for a lot of different purposes. You can see if I just do a quick render of just one little area of this, this is actual 3D objects, not just little particles and we're really in a 3D world. So let's get started on how to build this. In Cinema 4D, I'm just gonna make a new project and I'll set up my scene quickly in render settings for physical 1280 by 720, or you could do 1080 if you wanted and turn on ambient occlusion, cause why not? And what we're gonna do is make one little rain droplet and then drop it into a particle emitter in Cinema 4D and then play around with some gravity and stuff like that to get it to slow down and some cool stuff that way. So for a droplet, I'm just gonna start with a sphere and I'm gonna turn on my lines and we want this to look like rain that would be transparent and reflect the environment around it a little and have a little bit of tint. So what we can do if we go to our content browser is there's actually some pretty cool HDRI images already built into Cinema 4D. If you go to presets, prime, materials, HDRI, there's some nice little starter ones with full wraparound 3D environment reflection. So I'll just grab this one and drag it onto my sphere. And if I do a quick render, this isn't gonna really work for rain, but you can kind of get the idea. So what I can do is double click this, edit the texture a bit. So let's give it a little bit of color and then turn that down to 50. So it's just tinted a little and we wanna add some diffusion to break it up. So I'll go to diffusion add noise, click noise, and just pick a different pattern. Hey, this one's more interesting, and that's just gonna help break it up a bit. And the luminance channel is what's showing this image. And what's really gonna make this thing feel alive is when we turn on transparency, and that's too far because it's invisible now. What we wanna do is turn on refraction to something like 1.52, which is glass, and we'll turn down the brightness a bit so we still get the image. And then we're gonna turn on reflection too and add Fresnel just to wrap that around. And you can see it's starting to get there and then we'll turn on our specular a bit and maybe turn my transparency a little higher to like 95. And this is super close up and you figure it's moving, but if we back the camera out, you can see we're getting there, it feels like rain. And if you figure these things are really small from far away, that looks pretty good, like a droplet of rain. You know, it's small, but you can see that there's definitely some detail going on. And when you punch the camera in, there'll be enough there to really feel like it's actually a little transparent water droplet. And there's lots of other textures that you could just pull for things like liquids, water, maybe this water pool one in that same prime. But it never hurts to do some quick tips on some different things you can do with some built-in ones. So anyway, we'll start there. I got one little water droplet, but we need it to be really raining. So what we want to do is we can drop this in a particle emitter. And how I can get that is if I go to simulate particles emitter. And I'll just put a camera in now too, because I know I'm going to need one. So I'll put a camera and just get in my camera view. And if I zoom in to my particle emitter here and scrub through the timeline, we can see we got this little box and it's shooting out these white little dots. And what we can do is if I go to emitter, we want to put this sphere in emitter because we want to emit that. And under emitter, I'm going to go to show objects and render instances. And then if I play, now it's shooting my spheres out. But they're way too big and they're pointing the wrong way and there's not enough of them. So I'll go to my sphere 
And this works similar to other extrusions and all sorts of parent-child relationship stuff in Cinema 4D. I can still edit the sphere. So we just scale those way down. Then we get smaller rain. And what I want to do is have a lot of rain, have it not just be a little box and have it pointing the right way because I want to be shooting to the side. So what I can do with this emitter, like any other object, is I can just rotate it to point down. And then under emitter, in the emitter tab, I don't want it 100 to 100. I want it big enough to where it looks like it's everywhere. So if I go bigger than my frame size, so like 2,000 by 2,000, then it's going to be emitting this whole big area. And then I can just push that above my camera so it's out of frame. And I might want to do that from the side too. And that way it's going to be emitting rain into my scene. Kind of similar to if you had an actual rain machine or snow machine in production, you just put it high enough above the frame so you don't see that it's actually just dumping out from a source. So now there's a couple little raindrops coming out, but not really that many. So what we want to do is add more rain and speed it up a bit. So if I go to emitter and I can go to particle, here's where I can really control what's happening. So I have birth rate editor and birth rate renderer. And what this means is how many I see in my viewport and how many I see when I actually render this out. And it's useful to keep that in mind because we don't necessarily need to see all of them while we're working. So as an example, if I wanted 8,000 particles to be an editor and renderer, if I scrub through it, try to do too much, you can see that it's really slowing down. And if I do a render real quick, we can see that it renders however many I had at that point. And there's not many of that on the screen yet. But why this is useful is because let's just turn up the speed first. So we get 500. So they are coming down a little quicker just by default. And you can see it's kind of really slowing down, but I don't need to see that many instances in my viewport just to get this when I render it. What I can do is just keep the editor at like 300 so I can see what's happening and know enough about what's going on so it's raining and they're dropping down. And then when I render, I'm still gonna get all 8,000. So it can really be useful to kind of keep the editor low and render whatever you want. Now, I might want to scale these down even a little further. And what we can do is vary the speed a bit so it doesn't look like they're all just falling. So again, I'll just go back to the beginning with Shift F, play. And now we're starting to get rain. And if we render out a frame of this, again, it looks more like stars. It doesn't look quite like rain. And what we can do to fix this is if rain is flying by the camera, it's not just going to be completely in focus. It's going to be blurry. So if we go to our render settings and go to physical and turn on motion blur and then just do another render, now it's going to look more like rain. And it's going to look more like this test render that I had where it's actually blurry because that's what would happen. And that's kind of what we're used to seeing naturally. And this looks kind of grainy. So if this was a final render, we could always on physical change the sampling quality to high and I'll do another render and it'll take a little longer. But you can see that's looking pretty nice. It looks like rain. It looks like it's quickly going by the camera and the quality from here to here is much better. So for a final render, you might want to turn that up, but know that it'll take a lot more time. So always be keeping that in mind. So I'll just stop this because I don't need to be rendering and turn this down to just low again because I don't need it while I'm working. And so we got a particle emitter. It's emitting some raindrops. We can speed it up. So if we want to go faster, and what we can do is animate these properties. So if I wanted to animate speed, I could command click 800, go ahead and then put it to zero or maybe like 25. Cause even if it's slow motion, it's still moving a little and then it's going to start to slow down, but we can't quite see it. So we probably need a lot more in our timeline to actually see what's happening. So let's put this at 300 and drag it out and then we'll play again. And now we can see it's really slowing down a lot. So again, let's take a look at that keyframe, maybe put it at like two, get it really slow. And rather than rendering extra frames and things like that, we can just animate that property. And we could do that a different way too, if we want to really get some science into it. That's just emission speed and that's helping. But we also, if we go to simulate particle, there's other things like attractor deflectors, if you want to move them towards something as well as wind and gravity. So if we wanted gravity to be in our scene, we'd want it pointing down, of course, which it does by default. And that's going to do kind of the same thing and push them down. 
And you can see they keep going because gravity is on now, so it kind of overrides this speed. So let's just right click on speed and delete track. So now what we have is this gravity property in our scene. If we click it, we have acceleration 250. So if I rotated this to the side in play, we don't see anything because we need to zoom out. We can see gravity is going this way now, which is pretty cool. Because rather than worrying about the emitter, we can actually have gravity and rotate it around. So if you wanted some crazy sci-fi scene of all of these are kind of going to the left for a couple seconds, and then on this gravity, the coordinates rotate from 90 to zero, then you can see it's emitting, 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 and then it's gonna start to fall. And that can be cool, you could do a lot with this. And let's figure that same thing we can, rather than rotating it, and I'll just move my camera kind of back where it was. Let's delete that track again, animation, delete. So right now we just have gravity going down, down, down. And then I'll just need to point it back down. So now we have gravity going down, it's pulling these down, but what we can do is go to gravity, object, and we can turn this acceleration on and off. So if we went to frame like 60, make a keyframe, and then go to 100, and put it at like negative 200, we can actually have it falling down, and then it's going to get negative, so it's slowly going to slow down and kind of shoot back up. So if you want to do kind of a crazy sci-fi scene where you know gravity's kind of slowing down, time stopping, you could do some cool stuff by rather than just animating speed, animating actual gravity of these and having it really slow down. And then if we figure we're getting there looking at the details, we could have our camera animate in and punch in to look at those. So let's play our scene and kind of see when it starts to slow down. And let's take our camera and animate position rotation. And then while it's slowing down, we could punch in and really look at, you know, exactly one of these particles and really start to play with time and space and dive into our scene. So maybe it flies through there and new keyframe. So if we play now, it starts to rain and it's raining, raining, and then a camera kind of shoots in there and looks at it as it slows down and then suddenly gravity goes back up and that can be cool. And there's so much stuff hitting these menus. There's a lot you can do beyond that. You could keep playing with stuff and say it's raining, raining, raining. We could go into particle and do things like turbulence or wind or a tractor. So let's say once we have that in our scene, time kind of starts slowing down, there's particles flying and I'll just push this kind of where the camera goes. We could animate these properties of this attractor in addition to gravity. So I'll command click for strength on attractor and then turn it up to like 2000 one more zero, command click. And now as this is happening, rain's coming, there's gravity, gravity stopping, and then all of a sudden they're gonna shoot towards that point and can all move towards there. And again, if I look at my emitter, I'm only emitting 300 in my scene in the viewport so I can see what's going on in this real time. But now if I did a render with Shift R, it's going to render all 8,000. You can see that they're starting to slow down, be pulled towards that attractor. So you could have kind of rain turn into a tornado and slow down and you're in the middle of the tornado. And a lot of cool physics and weather effects and things like that without really having to understand too much about how physics and weather effects actually worked. But just keeping in mind, we can have an emitter, it can drop stuff, and we can grab anything in simulate particle such as gravity's attractors, deflectors, have it bouncing all over the place, have anything be particles. You could have multiple things be particles and do some really cool stuff and turn on motion blur in our settings just to have it really look like it's zipping by the camera. So this has been Sean Frangella teaching you how to make CG slow motion rain and some cool physics and particle effects in Cinema 4D. Be sure to stop by premiumbeat.com for all of your music and sound effects needs and check out the blog on premiumbeat.com for tips and tricks on Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other animation and motion graphic apps. If you want to see more of what I do, you can check out some more of my tutorials on youtube.com slash seanfrangella or hit me up on twitter slash seanfrangella as well as check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash vital and really any social network you can find me. 
somewhere around talking about 3D stuff. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to all Premium Beat channels and YouTube and Vimeo to get more animation tutorials, and I will see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.